Hello, and welcome to our first NCAA baseball in-season video bulletin for the 2005 season. My name's Dave Yast. I serve as the national coordinator of baseball umpires for the NCAA. Before we begin today, I want to thank those of you that attended one of our five regional umpire clinics at the beginning of the year. We were able to reach over 1,300 umpires during this process and appreciate your time and attendance. I also want to thank those umpires that served as presenters during this year's clinics. Please remember, many of these PowerPoint presentations are available on our website. Let's start the clips with some good habits from our umpires. This first is pretty basic, but note the good set position and focus by our first base umpire. In this clip, we've got a bunt up the first baseline. Watch the first base umpire. Moves to adjust to the play and gives a good, strong, safe call. On this play, we have a runner on first base only. We have a deep fly ball to center field. U1 goes out on this fly ball, and U3 slides to first base for his responsibility on a R1. Note the position of all three umpires at the conclusion of this play. U1 in the outfield, U3 at first base, and our plate umpire has moved into a position to help in case there was a throwback and possibly an overthrow at first base. And watch their great hustle back to positions after the play. Here we have runners on first and second base and a base hit to left. Watch as the runner from first base attempts to score. Note the contact between the runner and the catcher. Is this flagrant? Does this deserve an ejection? Our answer is no. This is not a flagrant collision and the offensive team should not be penalized by ejection of this player. In this play, the front end of a possible double play. Watch the runner sliding into second base and watch his left arm. We believe that this should be force play slide rule interference due to the action of the runner and his attempt to grab the shortstop's arm. In this clip, you'll see a bunted ball go down, strike the ground, and come directly back up and strike the bat again. By rule, this is a foul ball. The batter is still within the box and would not be declared out in this situation. I want to start this clip by saying this is a very, very tough call. This is a ground ball on the infield. The shortstop throw pulls the first baseman off the base and there's a swipe tag. I think our umpire does a good job adjusting the play and sells the safe call very, very well. Due to where this play occurred, the last 45 feet to first base, we have a visual reference to the three foot running lane that the runner is allowed to use to avoid a tag. We believe that this runner is out of the base path and should have been declared out. Now we'll watch some situations. This is the play that you saw earlier in the bulletin with the collision at home plate. I'll let it run all the way through this time and you'll note an exchange between the runner and the pitcher that was backing up home plate.
All of our umpires did a good job in this situation. Our plate umpire steps in between the catcher and that runner, and our first base umpire comes in and talks with the pitcher. This situation is much more subtle. Watch this inside pitch and the batter attempt to get hit by it. The catcher takes exception and during this clip where you can't see it is having words with the batter. Watch our plate umpire intervene. This is a great job of recognizing a situation and acting proactively. We continue to talk about getting the call right and the proper situations to get help from your partner. Watch this ground ball on the infield and play at first base. The offensive team believes the first baseman may have come off the bat. The head coach comes out, confers with the base umpire, and they go to the plate umpire and ask for assistance. This is handled perfectly in this situation. This last situation is the argument that occurred after the play that you saw earlier in the bulletin with the runner possibly being out of the base path. We think that the umpire handled this part of the argument very well. The coach comes out fairly aggressively and the umpire even has to wipe spit off of his face because the coach is so close. He attempts to walk away, the coach follows. The coach begins now talking about other plays in the game and balls and strikes. He's warned and then ejected. Our umpire walks away as we instruct. Watch what happens as the coach follows the umpire. There's no question in my mind that there was contact in this situation between the coach and the umpire. It's just hard to determine whether this was a bump initiated by the coach or the umpire stopped and the coach then bumped into him unintentionally. After discussing this situation with our coordinators on our monthly conference call, we'd like to point out a few do's and don'ts in this situation. First, I want to again commend this umpire. He gave the head coach every opportunity to walk away and end this argument before he had to eject him. And then after the ejection, he again walks away and the coach follows. If one of our partners has a situation like this, we should be close enough to hear part of the conversation and then after the ejection, get in and separate the two parties as soon as possible. Encourage your partner to walk away and then assist in getting the coach off the field. If you are involved in a clear bumping incident or any other act that would fall under Rule 516B, physical abuse of game officials or umpires, they must be reported on a suspension report form to your coordinator, the athletics director of that institution, and the conference commissioner. Lastly, let's be careful about the words that we use in our reports. If it's a bump, say so and make it a suspension report form. If it's not, you can use incidental contact as the correct term. As we close this first bulletin for the 2005 season, I want to reiterate our points of emphasis for the year. Let's not fall into the trap of enforcing these things early in the year when they're fresh in our minds and then slacking off as the season progresses. Remember to make contact with and utilize your game management personnel for any difficult situation that may arise. Continue to enforce the zero tolerance policy for tobacco use for players, coaches, and other umpires. And lastly, be familiar with the force play slide rule and be prepared to call it at any time during the game. Thanks for your time and attention today. I encourage you to check back around the 1st of April for our next bulletin. Please remember, all rules questions should be sent to baseball at ncaa.org. Continue to work hard and have fun.